what I want to talk about today is um, I have a Woodlore clone. It's made by uh, Gray Wolf Knives. 530 seconds thick. 01 with Osage orange handles, a uh, brass lanyard tube, brass uh, fisheye bolts. Heavy duty knife, very heavy duty. I have softened the shoulders on this like I do with every knife. Get that transition down a little bit. Anything you can do to make the knife work to, uh, you know, to, to meet your needs, your criteria. There isn't a one size fits all. Uh, because of its uh, thickness, this knife uh, is even more specialized than it already was. Uh, just you know, the, the, the Scandi grind is, is a sort of a specialized grind. Uh, you know, let's let's uh, let's realize that first. Okay, there's one thing that it does very very well. Okay, and the thicker that you get, the less other things it does well, like um, food prep, for instance, cutting potatoes and carrots and things like that with this knife are a bear. Um, but splitting wood and those things are actually quite easy. Now the difference uh, between this and Ray Muir's knife, obviously, is that uh, this does not have the distal taper. This isn't even skeletonized, so you do have a little bit of a handle heaviness. Overall, this will do all of your bushcraft tasks. Um, Truncating at times can be a little difficult. You know, you're you're batoning to go to go down through a, a sapling, maybe to get a a, a, a tent peg or, or a shelter pole. And because of this low height grind, where you meet the stock thickness so fast, uh, sometimes it can almost feel like you're backing out of your own cut. You have to go up and, and make another cut to to wedge it. Where other knives, full flat grinds, saber grinds. Um, hollow grinds even, of course convex grinds, you can mostly just go right through the tree three quarters of the way, a little bit on the other side, and fell it. Um, it's a little bit different with this. Not that it can't be worked around. Uh, this is just some maple that I uh, chopped off with that little hatchet there. Uh, axe, whatever you'd like to call it, off of this uh, chunk right here. And I, I split it up with the axe, and a lot of that I think is just out of habit. Um, of course, I did it when the uh, off camera, but <clears throat> this is just one of the feather sticks that I had made. And that's one of the things that this knife here uh, really excels at is, is that type of stuff exactly right there. Carving, shaving wood, Scandinavian grind uh, really excels at that. Okay, it would almost be like a bird and trout knife to, uh, to you know, a, a small game hunter, fisherman. Okay, it's, a, it's about that specialized. So if you're not doing a lot of woodworking um, and, and that type of stuff integrated into your camp craft, it it's sort of might not be your knife. Maybe you're looking more for a little more of a utilitarian design uh, where this obviously is going to excel more with the, the wood craft part of it all. Of course, you guys have all seen it do countless feather sticks uh, on the world of YouTube. You've seen it split, uh, chop, cross grain, everything like that. Of course, because of its size, it's not a good chopper. And definitely because of its grind, it doesn't really bite that well that way. But it is highly robust. Now, I know a, a lot of people, you know, really... Um, really enjoy the, uh, the, the, the Scandinavian grind for its, for its ease of sharpness. Um, but because of the grind, it's, uh, there's two sides to that. Because of that wide bevel, that's a lot of steel to sharpen. That's a lot of steel to remove. So in a sense, if you're going to sharpen the whole bevel, you need to remove a ton of steel. Whereas, say, something like this, you don't. You're just touching up just this edge. Very, very little. Now, out in the field, you can still do the same thing. Okay, you got a little piece of ceramic or whatever it is. Uh, you can still just touch up that edge. 
out in the field. Do whatever you need to do. And then uh, if you want to keep your true Scandi, you should probably bring it to the stones as soon as you can and, and uh, you know, take that back down. Uh, some people like to uh, quickly put, depending on what they're doing, quickly put a micro bevel on there, uh, do out their game, do their deer, whatever it is, and then uh, put it right back to um, zero, you know, take, terminating it right down to, to, to nothing again for your, for your woodwork. It usually tends to be that the uh, woodworking comes much easier if you don't have that micro bevel on there. But the micro bevel um, does seem to support the edge just, uh, just a little bit more. And as we've talked before, um, you know, geometry determines the functionality of the heat treatment of the steel, right? So, so we've got um, good heat treatment from what I can tell, and and that. But but our geometry is 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 quite thick. Okay, is quite thick. Uh, <clears throat> I do enjoy carrying it, but you have to realize that. This here is definitely, in my mind, a part of a system. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna want it to be part of a of a system because, uh, like I said, the food prep category. It's not great. So if you're into doing a lot of uh, camp cooking and, and those types of things, and and I do like I do enjoy that. Um, view it maybe as part of a kit. Now don't get me wrong, you can do all that with this, and I have. Um, I've done out creek chubs with this. Okay. Sometimes I've moved the, the, the fish more than the knife, but I've done out creek chubs, okay? So, I mean, if, if you're out there and you can do that, you can do anything. Um, sometimes people think it's like the end of the world if, if you have the wrong grind on a knife. Well, you, you'll get by, trust me. You'll get by. And um, <clears throat> in terms of comfort, the old Coke bottle shape that, that, that are, uh, you know, is indicative of, of this design is very hand-filling very comfortable. This knife you can use for quite a while and, and, and use it forcefully and you don't have to pry your, your hand open when you're, when you're done. Your hand is not fatigued. Your, your forearm and stuff is, is, is not fatigued because of that uh, nice hand filling uh, design there. And this nice beak here on the pommel is, is nice as well if you are going to do some light little chopping or, or peeling of, of, of something. It gives you far more momentum okay or to just do something like this all right far more momentum all right grabbing that like that so you can improvise you can improvise you can adapt and you can overcome if you do choose this knife like i said its application is going to be mostly geared towards the woodcraft bushcraft style stuff all right if you don't find yourself doing a lot of this stuff it may may not be the right knife for you all right there's uh you know Dozens and dozens and dozens of knives out there that will split wood and make feather sticks. Okay, there, there's there's a lot of them. So, if you maybe are a little more geared towards uh, fish and game and that, but you like to do this stuff out there as well, or uh, you know your deer camps or your different camps and camp cooking with your friends, but you like to start fires, you know, more in the uh, in, in the woodcraft bushcraft style and do those things. It is a great great uh uh you know companion out there and i always have a pocket knife on me so uh food prep and you know um clean slicing through uh you know thicker media is uh no problem all right no problem to do that because i have a pocket knife on me that does that all right so uh the sheath is uh, i'm going to do a tabletop review and I can break all this down. The sheath is just handmade by me with a little uh, lanyard hole in there. Okay, but um, like I said, part of a system, as I think most things are. Okay, uh, any good woodsman has a system of tools. Um, it's great entertaining the idea and even going out with one tool. And I've done it. And you, you get good with that tool. You, you learn to work around it. And then I recommend doing that if you have a favorite belt knife, uh, doing that on occasion. Because you basically... Um, you're married to that tool for your trip, whether your trip is a day hike and do you know or, or overnighter, uh, multi day or week, multi week. You will you are married to that tool. Um, <clears throat> you know, don't set yourself up for disaster. You know, always test things in your backyards first, whether it's winter gear, sleeping gear, knives, axes, shoes, even you name it. 
uh, you know, you don't want to start your 15-mile uh, hike uh, over the course of, you know, two days, uh, you know, <laughs> with a brand new pair of boots that you never tried before because it could turn disastrous. And it's the same uh, with, with tools, all right? So uh, it's not that I oppose the one tool option. I just don't generally roll like that. And uh, like I said, most woodsmen uh, don't um, in terms of their, you know, it's a, it's a kit mentality. You have, you know, an ax, a hatchet, saw, a pocket knife, a leatherman, whatever, uh, your belt knife. Uh, some people have, you know, two fixed blades and, a, a, you know, a bow saw. Whatever your combination is to allow you to achieve whatever you need to achieve is fine, as long as it's working for you. This uh, style knife happens to work for a lot of people, and it does work for me. And, uh, of course, the better you get, just about any knife will work for you. But, uh, like I said, I'll do a tabletop review, and we'll look at this knife uh, a little bit closer. Thanks for joining me again.